I'm meteorologist Mark Collins. We're talking about Tropical Storm Aaron. Still a very compact storm embedded in a lot of dry air. That's why there's not a lot of thunderstorms with this, and it hasn't grown any stronger. Winds at 45 miles per hour makes it just kind of a weaker and tropical storm. However, as it tracks off towards the west, there's the potential for it to develop into a hurricane, most likely Thursday night into Friday when we could see that. That's when it would be in an area where there is more moisture, farther away from the deserts of Africa, where that dry Saharan air layer and it blows off into the ocean. Right now it's in that and that's why there's not a great amount of thunderstorm activity. All the tropical models uh, keep it well off our coastline. In fact, no one, none of these models show it impacting any land with the exception of Bermuda. In Bermuda, uh, the GFS model is showing that it comes very close to that island. All the models will start to show that turn towards the north and we're looking for that to happen on Sunday. So right now the consensus is this will miss Puerto Rico, this will mi miss many of the islands in the Lesser Antilles, but there you see Bermuda could be close to this storm. What you don't see here is the European model. We don't have that model in our system, but it is further away from Bermuda, and that tends to be the more reliable model. Now, while it is further west, it's not far enough where it impact the United States. So even the reliable European model, which is a little slower, but further west, does miss Bermuda. Now, there is some dry air that this is in, but as it moves closer to the uh, western side of the Atlantic, notice how that green, that's the moisture, as it gets a little bit stronger in a more humid environment, it can intensify and bring up additional moisture from down in the deep tropics. And you can see those green filaments coming off of Venezuela and uh, Colombia. That could feed the strengthening process as that system rolls north of Puerto Rico. Now, as that system grows stronger, the fetch, those winds pointed at Florida would be pushing waves our way, and those swells would arrive on Tuesday of next week. So right now, it's just a tropical storm, very compact, but notice here on the GFS model, the cloud ball gets bigger, it starts to expand, and that would be more indicative of that growth process for it to become a hurricane. And there you see it moving north early next week. So why would it take the turn north? Well, you can count on a couple cold fronts moving off of the North New England area, and those fronts might actually drag it up north. This was the Euro swath wind. You see on this weekend, you start to get those oranges. So it is slower on developing it into a hurricane, and that is the model that is a little bit further to the west of Bermuda. This is the GFS, and you can see how it rounds the ridge of high pressure, and then on Monday starts to take that northern uh, track towards Bermuda or in the general vicinity. Front number one is there to weaken that ridge of high pressure, and then another front will secure that system and move it off towards the north. So there are two fronts that will likely put a dent in the Bermuda Ridge, and that should allow that turn more towards the north. So really the only impacts to Florida are the wave heights that will be building in. There you see the winds in orange, which is hurricane strength, and then getting it even stronger to that cat two, cat three threshold Sunday into Monday, and that would put large amount of 15-foot waves close to Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, whereas some models are forecasting waves up to 45 feet near the center of the storm. Let's hope all that, uh, it, that all, all that this storm has to show is some waves and higher rip currents along the coastal areas, and let's hope it just winds down out to sea. All right, that's your latest advisory on Tropical Storm Erin. I'm meteorologist Mark Collins.